we are going to read the text Mojave together. So at this time, if you don't have it open, you know the drill. Pause the video. Make sure that you have this reading open. Okay, it seems like we all must have the reading. Uh, so this is a really cool text. Amazing Wildlife of the Mojave. So if you noticed, I said Mojave. Hmm. That's a really interesting name, um, Mojave Desert. So the Mojave, if you don't even know anything about it, if you just look through the pages, if you just look through, and if you look at some of the pictures, where is this, where is this? The Mojave looks like really dry. I look at some of the, hey, some of the, yeah, it's very dry. There's not a lot of plants. There's no grass. Some of the plants I do see, the little ones that I do, kind of look like maybe something I would see in a desert. Okay, so the Mojave, you can kind of figure out that it's a desert. Um, I'm going to share with you where it is in the world. So this is a map of North America. North America so you have Canada, United States, Mexico. Um, so in North America, in the United States, the Mojave Desert is, let's see, it's not, it's not in the north part. It's not in the east part. It's in the western part. You can say the southwest part of the United States. So the Mojave Desert is in the southwest part of the United States. So this is um, where this desert is. We're gonna read about some of the animals that live there. Later for reading, um, your goal is going to be basically to compare and contrast the unique animals we're gonna learn about. Um, this was written by Lawrence Pringle. So that's the author of this text. Lawrence is typically a guy's name. Page 327. Deserts are challenging places to live. They are dry and often very hot. Okay, really quick, have any of you ever visited a desert? Hmm, come to think of it, I haven't. I've never visited a desert. Each year, only a few inches of rain, like a little bit of rain, fall in the Mojave. Mojave. Hey, so that's actually how Mrs. Bond knew how to say this. Mojave. It tells you how to pronounce or say it correctly. It is North America's smallest desert. Wow. It lies mostly in parts of Southern California and Southern Nevada. The Mojave has both mountains and valleys. It includes, ooh, Death Valley the lowest and hottest place in North America. Whew, that would be hard to visit Death Valley. On a car ride through the Mojave Desert, you may pass by many miles of bare, dusty earth and scattered bushes. However, on a morning hike, you can discover that a desert is a lively place. Hey, lively, that has the root word live, so that means there must be some life there. Birds sing, lizards scurry after insects, jackrabbits and roadrunners dash among the bushes and cactus plants. Next section, a living place. Although it is very dry, the Mojave is a living place or environment for many fascinating animals and plants. Over many years, they have changed or adapted. Hey, there's that word adapted again adapted so they live very well in a dry hot environment they do this in different ways in the mojave you might see several kinds of lizards they are all related all lizards are reptiles reptiles all have scaly skin however they are different in many ways the desert spiny lizard for example, is only a few inches long. Most of its food is insects. Hmm, next page. The chuckwalla is very different. It can grow to almost three feet long. Woo. 
this big, so three feet long. I'm trying to think of a good comparison. Uh, Mrs. Bond is five feet, two inches. So three feet, that's about half the size of Mrs. Bond, half the height of Mrs. Bond about. This big lizard eats leaves, flowers, and fruit of plants. It is also has a special way of protecting itself. If a chuckwalla senses danger, it quickly hides in a crack between rocks. Then it <gasps> gulps in air, making its body fatter. It becomes tightly wedged in so that a predator cannot pull it out. Ooh, that's pretty amazing. That's something it does to survive or live there. So if someone comes, it sees like this little rock, it goes into the rock, <gasps> pops out its body, and makes itself really, really like full and fat so that it takes up all the space. So that if someone were trying to get it, they couldn't do it. Okay, so later you're gonna have to compare the Chuckwalla with the, ooh, what was the other one called? The Spiny Lizard. That was the little itty bitty one. Later you'll have to compare those two and contrast. Okay. Um, there's also other text features. I see there's a map on this page. What does the map text feature tell us? Okay, I see green means national park. So that means it's like, the government owns it, it's owned by the nation, or preserved, like it keeps stuff the way it is naturally. Water is blue, okay, I see the Pacific Ocean, I see some rivers. The desert is orange. Okay, so you can kind of actually see more of a close-up of the Mojave Desert, and you can actually see there's three different national parks where people can come and visit. So if you ever wanted to go to the Mojave Desert, you could. The name Mojave means alongside water. Hmm. It comes from the Mojave people. They were Native Americans. That means they've lived in America way longer than European settlers did. The first ones to live in America. Who once lived along the lower Colorado River. The river flows through part of the Mojave Desert. Hmm. Can you guys find the Colorado River? Blue, well, it's not the Pacific Ocean. No, it's a, that, no. Oh, oh, I found it. Hey, look, it goes, there it is, Colorado River. Huh, and then I see there's another text feature, the photograph, right? The hawk. This hawk looks out for food from the top of a, a yucca palm. That's an interesting name, yucca palm. Hmm. Interesting plants. And then the other one of the Chuckwalla. That's a fun name. Have you guys tried to say that out loud yet? Chuckwalla. Okay, say it three times fast. Chuckwalla, Chuckwalla, Chuckwalla. Chuckwalla, Chuckwalla, Chuckwalla. Chuckwalla, Chuckwalla, Chuckwalla. Chuckwalla, Chuckwalla, Chuckwalla. Woo! That's like a tongue twister. This Chuckwalla will quickly squeeze itself between rocks if a predator comes near. Okay, so it just tells us what we read too. Okay. Last section for today, getting water in the desert. This is important. Animals get water in different ways in the Mojave. Coyotes, I've also heard people say, pronounce coyote. Okay, I say coyotes. Coyotes, bobcats, and other large mammals can travel a long distance for a drink. So can some birds. Some lizards, snakes, and mice are different. They cannot travel far. They might prefer to drink from a stream or even a puddle, but these are rare treats in a desert, okay? So do you often find puddles or rivers or lakes in a desert? No. So that means they're not likely to find that, to get water. So how do they get water? They find water in different ways. They get some from tiny drops of dew that form overnight on plants or stones. Their main source of water is the food they eat. Flowers, seeds, and leaves contain water. Did you guys know that? 
The bodies of insects, scorpions, and other animals are all at least half water. So literally half of their body is water. That's interesting. Some desert animals get most or all of the water they need simply by eating food. Okay, and then I can actually see there's a picture, there's a photograph text feature, and there's a caption to go with it of the coyote. It says this coyote can travel far to find water. Oh, look at the next page. Look at the next page. Look at the photograph. And I see there's a caption, another text feature. Light colored fur helps this kangaroo rat. Are we in Australia? Kangaroo rat hide from predators. Okay, predators are the animals that want to eat the kangaroo rat. Okay. Why is it called a kangaroo rat? I know it, it definitely looks like a rat. I know what a rat is. But a, a kangaroo, that's, you know, that's the marsupial that jumps, jumps, boing, boing, boing. Hey, I wonder if the kangaroo rat, does it like jump kind of like a kangaroo maybe? Hmm. Light colors help. People who live in or visit deserts often wear light colored clothes, like white, cream, tan, light colored. This is smart because dark colors take in or absorb sun energy, while light colors reflect it. Boing. Did you guys know that? Okay, so in summertime, actually, if you wear like black or dark clothes, that the sunlight, when it comes to the dark clothes, it's going to keep in that, it's going to keep in that light, that warmth. It's going to keep it in. It takes it in. And it makes you <sighs> hotter. But if you wear like lighter colors, like white or beige or something, it's going to go boing, going to bounce off and you're going to be cooler, actually. You can avoid overheating, like getting way too hot, by wearing light colors. Desert animals do the same by being light colored. Hmm. Being light colored can help animals in another way. In the Mojave, the land is often colored tan. Okay, so do you kind of see up here the picture, like tan? That's what we would call that, tan gray and light brown. So you kind of see those colors. Pale mice, insects, or lizards are hard to see against this background. This gives the animals some protection from predators that try to catch and eat them. Not all desert animals are light colored. In some parts of the Mojave, mice and lizards are much darker. They are different because they live among rocks and soil that are black or dark brown. In those places, darker colors help them hide and survive. So some animals, how they adapt or how are they safe, it's their fur color matches what's around them. Pretty cool. We're gonna stop there today. Um, you can use this text to help, and you should use this text to help you answer the Mojave questions part one.